Hey guys, Lawrence here from Unicorn Reviews with the HP Omen Obelisk. This is a pre-built gaming system and I know a lot of you are going to say why the hell would you need a pre-built and that's exactly why I wanted to review this particular pre-built gaming system. I think HP has done something really clever here. The idea is you buy a pre-built from a big company like HP but it's all standard components, so it's a standard ATX power supply, standard micro ATX motherboard, standard everything. And so as you progress in your knowledge about gaming computers or computers in general, and you want to upgrade this thing, you can. So this is something for people who, they perhaps want to build their own computer, but they're not quite confident enough yet, even though it's really not that difficult. Um, you can just get one of these and then upgrade it as you move along. First of all, there's a Core i7 8700 in there. No overclocking because the motherboard doesn't support it anyway. An NVIDIA GTX 1070 and um, there's a half terabyte SSD, NVMe SSD obviously, and a one terabyte hard drive. As you can see, I hope you can see, a um, tiny little CPU cooler and then it's a blower style card. Now what's really nice is while this card has just a single 8 pin, there is a secondary 8 pin there as well. So if you do want to upgrade, the power is there and it is big enough to put a bigger card in. However, I'm going to bring you guys in and we'll have a really close up look at this case because as I said, the concept, really interesting, the execution, yeah, we'll see. Now, something I did forget to mention in my intro is the packaging. Look at this, guys. This is the best packaging ever. Really, really big, massive amount of cushioning here. So if you buy online and it arrives in the original box, then um, it's probably going to arrive perfectly fine. So that's really nice to see. We'll start with the most important stuff. It is RGB. So. It's RGB, guys. Uh, anyway, plastic front panel, um, but it's got this brushed aluminium look to it. It picks up fingerprints a little bit, but it's not that bad. As you can also see, the sides are a satin look, while the center bit is um, brushed aluminium. It's quite a pointy front panel, and um, that's pretty much all there is to say about the front panel. The interesting stuff is at the top. And so over here in the top section, you have your power button, dual USB-Cs, why do I keep saying USB-C's? Oh, it's because it should be standard by now and it's still USB-A anyway. There's also a headphone and a microphone jack along with nice ventilation for the top, but we'll um, look at that a little bit closer in just a second. On the back panel, there isn't really much to see. All right, so I did mention it used standard ATX components and there you can see the standard ATX power supply. Above it, there are the slots for your standard PCI cards. Right now there's a GTX 1070 in there. And then above that is where the I.O. would be. Now, as you can see right here, there's just your microphone, stereo and the woofer port, along with gigabit ethernet, five type A, USB three ports and a type C. So there is a type C. What we don't get here are display outputs, which is really weird because, well, the CPU has a built-in graphics card thingy chip. Um, so I was kind of hoping to see at least a, an HDMI port on there so you can make do if the graphics card ever breaks and you're waiting for a new one. So what's really nice, and you don't see this with like, you know, DIY computer cases, is the way the side panel comes off. So it's just a big button, pops off, I did put my hand there, but it is self-supporting. I'm just a little bit scared. And then the side panel just lifts out. It's way better than those thumb screw thingies. Taking away the side panel though, you can look at the insides of the system. And the first thing I personally noticed is the tiny little CPU cooler. Now I've tested temperatures. It runs hot, but it doesn't throttle and it is enough. And you know, given that there's no overclocking and that this is already an i7, there's not really any need to upgrade it. So the cooler is good enough. Although, you know, it doesn't look all that impressive, does it? Next to the cooler, you can see a single memory stick. Again, this might change depending on which SKU you have. So this is 16 gigs of HyperX memory. I really shouldn't be putting my hand in a computer that's powered on, but whatever. Um, and then there's your half terabyte M.2 NVMe SSD in there as well. All the IO, is on this side with this motherboard. So if you want to put another motherboard in, you may want to check that the cables are actually long enough. 
What's really interesting is the power 24 pin is actually in the bottom below the graphics card. Um, it's something that you don't see very often, but it makes everything look nice and clean over here. The motherboard 4 pin is in the usual position though. Now I did bring you guys in a little bit closer because of that 25 liter that I mentioned earlier. Um, apparently they're proud of the size of this thing, but actually there's a lot of wasted space. For example, there's no top PCI slot, so you already lose the top slot. And there's really nothing to plug in a bottom one either. And so it's basically a mini ITX, ouch. See, you really shouldn't put your hand in a computer that's turned on. It's basically a mini ITX motherboard stretched out to micro ATX size. What's even weirder is if I zoom you guys out a little bit, look at how much room there is above the motherboard. With the same size case, there could have easily, easily been a full ATX motherboard in there. And um, what's even weirder, and this is really hard to get on film. Okay, so here's the top of the case. I really like the way the uh, little ventilation holes look from the top. But as you can see, there's not much ventilation going on right now. And this is the way HP ships it. It's the way 99% of the customers will keep it. Um, you can remove this hard drive plate, so you can mount a hard drive in there or just remove it and have some convection going on. Or at least give the front or um, this rear fan something to draw air through because other than that, ventilation is incredibly poor. For example, there are some cutouts in this side panel and you would maybe expect air to go through these cutouts. If you take the panel away though, you can see there's just metal here and behind that are hard drives. So there's not really any air gonna come through there. And on the other side, it's completely blanked off. So there's no air gonna come through the side panel. There's no air gonna come through the top panel, so let's look at the only place where air can actually come from. And so this is the bottom of the case, and um, there's a dust filter here. You can even remove it to clean it. Awesome that they included that. It's doable to reinstall it, but I won't do it right now. Again, you have that same beautiful mesh going on that we also saw in the top. However, this is my finger, and I will just take the brightness down a little bit. Um, Anyway, this is my finger, and then next to it you can see how much room there is for the air to go through into your power supply or in this general area for your graphics card to breathe. There's like two, maybe three millimeters there. And the reason for that is that this tiny rubber strip apparently is good enough to act as a case foot for HP. You would never see this on DIY computer cases, there's just a massive lack of airflow. That said, I couldn't observe any thermal throttling with the graphics card, but it just gets really loud. What's really worrying about this whole situation to me is that people will put the case on a carpet. You just know it's going to happen. And so the power supply and the graphics card are both fighting for air coming through this little area, while hopefully the rear fan can get a little bit from the top over there. It's gonna get so hot that I, even though it doesn't thermal throttle, that I really can't recommend something like this because it's just not good for the longevity of your components. If your graphics card is constantly over 90 degrees, even doing basic stuff. And again, HP counters that by revving the absolute vejesus out of the fan on there, but it just gets really loud and it's something that you can't really recommend. Um, and something that, yeah, you wouldn't see from like a third party DIY case manufacturer. And so this is that area below the graphics card. There's a little controller board over there for RGB stuff, I guess. I don't really know why it couldn't fit on this massive motherboard that doesn't really have any connectivity options. Um, there's a little Wi-Fi and Bluetooth card in there, and that's pretty much it. As I said, really weird to see the 24 pin at the bottom, but I kind of like it. And maybe more motherboard manufacturers should put it over there. Kind of makes sense. Now, talking about upgrades, there is a single SATA header left over because there is a single SATA drive cage left. So you can put another hard drive in there. It really doesn't make any sense that there's only one connector here when you can also mount a hard drive up there. And given that everyone's just gonna use this because it has a pre-routed power cable, I really don't understand why there's a metal plate in the top trying to choke the entire system. Doesn't make sense to me like many other airflow decisions in this case. This is a um, Metallic Gear Neo G. It's a budget case. It's cheaper than this can possibly be to manufacture. 
and it's also about one centimeter taller despite being a full-size ATX case with room for radiators to cool your CPU. So this is something that I would really recommend upgrading to if you got one of these just for the longevity of your components. Now I will admit this case is obviously quite a bit wider but it's actually the same length because it's got this pointy panel on the Omen. And so just before I move to the conclusion here are the performance numbers for the version I have again. If you have a different CPU, RAM or graphics card those numbers may vary quite a bit. Um, but yeah everything's playable even at 1440p, 4k even if it's not like maxed out intensity graphics. The performance is there, it doesn't thermal throttle, but I kind of expected more from HP. I really like the concept, you know, making it easier for people who are new to PC gaming. And there's a lot of people like that, especially with the entire Fortnite craze. Um, there's a lot of people who are new to PC gaming, um, who maybe want to build their own system, but they aren't quite confident, confident enough, they don't really know how to do it. And so they buy something like this and then later on they can upgrade it. However, the execution just isn't there. I think they wasted tons of space. They could have easily put an ATX board in there. Something simple like a graphics card connect or like a graphics connector on the rear I.O. in case the graphics card breaks or you need to swap it out or do some troubleshooting in general. There's just so many oversights with this case that I again I can't really recommend it. It's a reoccurring theme here with HP. Um, they make a lot of really awesome products and every time there's just some weird stuff that they manage to screw up completely. Like for example getting air into the case so your components can breathe and not die in two years time. Anyway, that was it for me. See you guys in the next one.